What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If this is your first time joining us, as I say, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you're on YouTube. And if you're listening, please subscribe on any other listening platform that you have. We can keep updating you every time we come out with a new episode. It's funny when people are like, when do the episodes come out? It's every Friday. It's always been every Friday. It's never changed. Whiskey Ginger Friday, baby, is when it comes out very early in the morning on both YouTube and on audio everywhere. Um, AndrewSantino.com has all the information on all the shows that have been rescheduled. If you're trying to see me on the Red Rocket Tour, I know they all got canceled and are rescheduled. I'm sorry. It's volatile. It's vulnerable. I don't know what to say. It's not my fault. I understand if... You know, this is a, a bummer time for you if I was supposed to be in your city in the next couple of months. We're trying to do it for the end of the year and keep pushing them until the government lets us get back together. You can also go on the site, though, in the meantime, and go to our Patreon where you get uh, one-on-one Cheeto chats and all sorts of exclusive content that you can't get here. And our merch is up there. We got some great merch over there at andrewsantino.com. T-shirts and and beanies and also a hoodie. Uh, I know it's a tough time, but if you're looking to grab a piece of merch in the meantime as uh, a gift or something. Uh, go there and snag it at andrewsantino.com. This week's guest is uh, honestly one of my favorite people. It's Tim Dillon. I love Tim Dillon. He is the man. We got into all sorts of wormholes about the virus. A lot of it is us playing around, joking, dude. We're just joking around. Tim, uh, Tim is so much fun to play with because he weaves in and out of uh, honest, honesty, reality, and uh, hyperbolized reality. And you don't really know what's uh, what's real or what's coming next. That's my favorite part about the dude. Enough of me blabbering on. Let's get to the episode. In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It's Mr. Tim Dillon. Tim, hey, baby. Quarantine. Quarantine. All right, we were talking about California has 30, 28,000 cases, and it's a 40 million human state. And you said why you think New York is. Why do you think New York is so much worse? Public transportation. The subway is very, is, it's like, you know, it's a disease. It spreads disease like fucking, I mean, forget it. Also, all the people that work, you got to realize there's only two and a half million people, 1.8 million people that live in Manhattan, but that population swells every day with, with about 2 million people bridge that commute and tunnel, in. Yeah. And bridge and tunnel. And right. a lot of it is tunnel. A lot of it is train. Uh, I mean, not, not, I'm mean, obviously tunnel. They, they usually mean people driving in, but like Metro North, people from coming from Westchester County, New Jersey Transit, Long Island Railroad, all of those people come and they sit in a train for an hour next to a stranger. Yeah, it's fine. For an hour before they get to their job. So they're yeah. fucked. What do you, be, let's be real here. Yeah. Other I than, said bomb it. Other I said cordon it off. Yeah, you New think York so? Just bomb, bomb it? it? Get rid of it. <laughs> I said it. a wall and bomb it's it It's time all. to make tough choices. All right. I love New York. Grew up there. Best city in the world. Bomb it. Bomb it. Sink or it. Or gas it. Don't hurt the architecture, but get rid of the people. I was going to say, keep the buildings are beautiful. Yeah, the buildings are so beautiful. Pretty. Get rid of the people. Wait, that's kind of like, okay, so Florida to me is this Italy's going to collapse. You think so? Yeah. It's coming near collapse. The EU is going to have to bail them out. They're in very big trouble. Um, Italy before this wasn't doing great, but they have um, yeah. the oldest population in Europe. This was a massacre. Um, they've been in lockdown now for several months. There are food shortages. Mm. One thing about America, you could say what you want about corporate blah, blah, blah. And I do a lot of the times. Like, oh, it's fucking annoying. It sucks. We have these massive corporations that keep food on the shelves. Italy doesn't have that. Yeah. Italy has mom and pop grocers where they're both dead now. Right, and what are you going to do? Dead. And who's going to take over that? Who's taking over? Yeah, that just sits there. Right. Right. See, that's it. well, what do you think? Like, Florida wants to be so independent away from all the shit that they... It's surprising. Texas is the one that always says that, like, you can't rift out Texas, but we're our own fucking place. Yeah. And, but they're they're not as... No, they're going to reopen next week. They're reopening retail. Yeah, but not like... Dude, Florida's, Florida's way going faster. Wild. And listen, run the experiment there. Yeah, fine. Run it there. <laughs> we need... Here's the thing. We need a state to run an experiment now. Yeah, they're the ones. We need... They're the ones. Well, wasn't it Tennessee before? Tennessee didn't close shit, right? Yeah. It's in, in, in Scandinavia. It's Sweden that's running an experiment and the right. death toll is very high because they didn't lock down at all. Yeah, they said fuck And it. the death toll is pretty fucking high. But listen, we need an experiment. We need a few states to run the experiment. Run it. Yeah. Run it. Yeah, so Florida's the one? 
Florida is a good one because it's hot, it's humid. So if it, here's the deal, it's a good preparation for summer. Because if it's a bloodbath in Florida, we know that summer is not mean, doesn't mean what, shit. What the, yeah, this was the whole thing about them saying that it was about heat, the heat levels are going to. Humidity makes your nasal tract and your throat. I'm a virologist. Yeah, you Humidity, are. you know, and this is thing people don't know. I have a doctorate in biochemical engineering. You have two doctorates, right? Two doctorates. I have biochemical yeah. engineering. I have virology. I'm an epidemiologist. And I know a lot of things. And oddly enough, and oddly also, enough, I do stand up. Stand up, but yeah. I am a do- I am a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody knows that. I, yeah. The why is it a cough and cold season? Why is there allergy season? Why is there all this stuff? Uh, the reality is, when it is humid, this is true. Yeah. Your your nasal tract, your throat is less hospitable to the types of germs that usually cause viruses, coughs, and colds. In layman's terms, for people that don't understand doctor talk, which I do, is that yeah. it means, basically... It means in the summer, in July... It clears it's, out. It's, it clears out. It's not as Nowhere to live. Yeah, it, there's nowhere to live. It's nowhere to live. Somebody came and said to me the other day, they said, hey, on the Diamond Princess cruise, they tested the counters and they said that the virus lived for 17 days. 17 and a half days, yeah. Here's the reality. That's not the infectious material. That's the RNA of the virus. It's an RNA virus. So... Uh, you're an ignorant piece of shit. <laughs> That's what I thought. But here's the deal. Yeah. Because no one knows anything about this, if you're not making people feel stupid, you're missing out. Right. Right now is the time to make people feel stupid and call people every day and tell them something that you just heard that they don't know and make them feel like an idiot for not knowing it. Do you find that, the, you know, it's a, you got tested, by the way. You got tested at the facility, didn't you? It's all fake. I mean, Rogan had his guy test me, but I, I don't believe any of that's real. You don't? No, I think there's a lot of people going around now being like, yeah, there, let me pick your... Uh, well, dude, I did, Let I me got, prick your finger and yeah, you're all right. good. By the way, isn't it odd that everyone that goes to Rogan Studios is negative? Yeah, no, Every nobody Every person's has it. negative. Well, also, did you do antibody tests or no? Well, that's the only test we took. I didn't do the swab in the head. We did antibody. I thought I had... But I thought fingerprints can do both, right? Isn't that what they say? First there's all, a there's a link that somebody gave me. They come to your house, this doctor. Yeah, you, you know what they want right now? What? Five hundred per test per person. Because they're it's fake. Here's the and deal: you know they're what? running around they're and fucking taking, killing it, and they're killing it because they're taking it. Rich people, the only you know, rich people are kind of gullible. They think they could buy everything. Yeah, they think everything's for sale. So the reality is, the there's two types of antibodies. There's a type of antibodies that mean you're currently fighting off the virus, mm-hmm. and then there's a type of antibodies that mean you're done with it. You've right. completely... You it's know. over. It's in the past. Yeah. yeah. And that guy... So the guy that tested me didn't distinguish. He didn't tell me. He wasn't like, okay, What did he, what he look like? Was he handsome? Yeah, he was just some good looking dude yeah, running around yeah. with him. But yeah, stop, you know. Stop. You know, he used to run one of those like... Uh, he probably was a guy that runs a cryogenic lab. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, as a guy yeah. that's just like, he, oh, what kind of junk science can I get involved in this month? Right. Oh, I'm testing people for antibodies. Good yeah. for that, dude. Good I for see, them. I see I see. Medicine in LA is an entrepreneurial activity. Right. It's a business. You know? I yeah. mean, it's a business. It's they, a hustle. They, these people just go out and they'll whatever, whoever has money, they're like, Oh yeah, we'll test you for this. You want a ventilator? I got yeah. one in the car. They don't They got there's a guy there's a guy online now that's selling these masks, these like homemade military yes. masks. Yeah. You can you can have whatever you want stitched on it. Oh, great. I, I imagine this guy is just absolutely, ki- I mean, killing He's it. He's killing it. Yeah. He's killing it because this is, a lot of new businesses are going to emerge, which is, I guess, good because none of the old ones are coming. Like, they say, you know, 50% of Los Angeles right now is unemployed. 50%. Can As you to imagine what that? was a normal unemployment here? 40? No. This, this no. city feels always unemployed. No. You've been out, you've been here 50% often. 50% is a monster number. I don't know, man. This city feels like it's never working. It's never. 50. That's the first thing my father said when he came here. Yeah. He's like, why the fuck does everyone get to just go outside? What, what, yeah, what? No one has jobs. Those are rich people. Yeah. The poor people work. The poor people work. Well, we don't rich go to those people. neighborhoods. Right. <laughs> well, now there are neighborhoods. Now, West Hollywood is getting is going to be homeless tents and everything. It's coming. Well, it's coming dude, here too. I, you know what's I mean, so it's, funny it's is I feel the hostility now when I... Yeah. It's You know when you walk past someone, you... Okay, I run every day. Yeah. I don't wear a mask because I don't run anywhere fucking near anybody. Yeah. Okay, I'm literally near nobody. I'm closer right. to you now than I right. am when I'm outside. Yeah. And I don't wear a mask. I don't get near anybody. The looks I get from people are, yeah. It's deadly. They it's hate like you. you fucking piece of shit. It's a dude, I'm nowhere near, I'm 50 feet away. And if I do see yeah. someone coming, I purposely run another way across the, the masks street. Masks make a lot of sense when you're inside or near people. When you're near people, the right. idea that like when you're alone in, in a park wearing a mask. I mean, these are these are like, you know what they are? It's a signifier that you understand that it's a real thing. And yeah. It's just you showing someone that is real. And it's Whitney explained that to me. She's like, well, it's just a way to show that you're like on board. It's like that's stupid. Yeah. But that's what it is. It's just no, that, and BS. that's look. Yeah. If I'm gonna go to a fucking store, I'm gonna wear a mask. I, I get the I get all that stuff. Right. But when people throw me that look, it's so strange to me. I'm curious to know genuinely because uh, I was talking about this the other day. I was saying 
I run past these homeless camps that are up here some, yeah. sometimes. And obviously not one of them, people. they don't have fucking masks. None of the homeless have masks. And I was like, I wonder what the population of homeless people that get the disease is. And I, w- I, would, I would guess, maybe wrong, it's extremely low. They te- Well, here's the thing. They tested a bunch of homeless people in Massachusetts. A third of them had antibodies, meaning they hadn't got over it. Wow. About 36% of them hadn't got Imagine over Imagine the strength of their immune system, too. Oh, yeah. They fucking live outside. They live outside. See, that was fascinating. I was thinking about, as I was running by, this guy, he was like making his bed for the night. Yeah. And I was running on the other side of the street, and I looked across the street, and I was like, I wonder how susceptible he would even be to catching the virus if somebody had it yeah, around it's him. like part of the problem is that we take antibiotics, we take, you know, we run and get cough and cold medicine all yeah. the time. Anytime anyone in our society feels the mildest tinge of discomfort, they're doctor. throwing a pill down their throat. Yeah, go to the Let doctor. Let me get Sudafed. Oh, I'm a little drowsy today. I got to have Sudafed. It's like everybody's just throwing, you know, something down their throat and it hurts your immune system. Do you take shit at night? No, but a lot of people do. Like, I, mean, I, mean, I, see, I, know, I don't like sleeping pills. I get very nervous about Sleeping pills. Uh, I, I'm a pussy with drugs. I don't. I'm not. I didn't used to be when I was doing. When you that. were doing drugs, you. you I wasn't a pussy. I was still a pussy. Here's why. I would never do two drugs together. Like I would never. Like if I was having a coke night, I had a coke night. I would never be. Like, you would Let's never see. drink and smoke. I and- would never do. Like I would smoke weed and drink, but I would never be like. Hey, what's a what's a Vicodin do on coke? Mm, yeah, because that's how people drop dead. I'm the same kind of pussy. What's a hey? What's a Percocet feel like when I'm on? You know, I wouldn't do that. Uh, a lot of people would do it like coming down. They would just start stuffing their face. I might do it the next morning, but I wouldn't do. <laughs> so I, I mean, that's probably why I'm still alive. Is that I was kind of a one one trick pony. Yeah. yeah, I'm the same pussy. When I was doing when I tried drugs, I never ever. Want, I was actually even more so like. When I first tried, tried mushrooms and did all that shit, yeah. didn't want to have a sip of beer or anything. Yeah. I was in my head always thinking like, I don't want to be the jagoff who f- gets too drunk, you know, falls asleep and then chokes on his throw up. I, big, I was like, I don't want to do that the shit. Big, of course. The big issue, I think, is like over-the-counter drugs. They're so, people take them all the time. Yeah, and they, well, yeah, and you think they, they're fine. They think they're fine. They think they're going to work. They don't really work. They bar- barely work. Yeah, well, so, they don't have enough strength to work if they're over the counter. Correct. And then, but what they do is they fuck your immune system up. They, they yeah. you know, they, 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 they delay the amount of time that your, your, your body's natural response takes. You, your, your cold takes a longer time. Even right. it's not as painful, it's longer. Right. You know, I'm an immunologist. I've worked with the immune system for many years. For 13 years, 13 you 13 years I've been doing immunology. And a lot of people come to me and, and I, becoming, being a medical professional yes. and a scientist yeah. has helped me so much right now. Now, when you open your lab here in Southern California to test your own, your own immunology experiments, have you found that uh, you, you might have a better keen sense of how to fix this thing? I have an idea of I, I listen. My practice is Western medicine, but I understand yeah. holistic health. I you understand, do you do dabble in Eastern medicine. You, that's the difference between me and a lot of people mm-hmm. is that I know traditional medicine, but I understand the body, and that's what that's what I bring to the table. Like a lot of people don't. That's why I I treat my body like a temple. I uh, and I and I have come out and said some controversial things that people don't want to hear. A lot of it. A lot of, like exercise will kill you. You also say pro, you, you also say double vax. There, there's anti vaxxers and and you're a double vaxer, uh, which means get it twice. I've I, I've said I've I've said there should be a heroin vaccination, right? Where everyone should take a full needle intravenous too of heroin. But you've but you've yeah. been co- but the, the controversy. Because then came some out, people just keep throwing up and they're right. like fuck it, and some people are like who. But the, but the article that came out of Newsweek that yeah. you got a lot of heat for was because yeah. you said that we should all share the the one needle for. There should be only three needles. I said that. I right. said everyone should, you know, there should be a needle for the wealthy that they should share. Right. Middle class and then poor. And then the poor. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But you also know the controversy in Newsweek said that the poor needle would be shared by exponentially more people. And your response to that was? Fuck it. Fuck it. Yeah. yeah. And, and and what's That's interesting what about yeah. that is that uh, death has to be embraced as a part of science. Uh, yeah. Right. I, I, I believe in death. Wouldn't that be funny? How great would it be if a guy just came on CNN and goes, I believe, I believe in, in death. death. Here's the thing. We are pussyfooting around. People don't understand. America's a fuck the government country, mm-hmm. and it's a fuck our health. 
Mm-hmm. So the idea that everyone's like, but everyone's going to die. It's like, that's not a good enough reason. No one cares about their lives here. Yeah, nobody cares. People are drinking a fucking Slurpee. That, like, no one cares. There's a 2,000 calorie pancake breakfast because the Denny's are eating. <laughs> no one cares about their life. So yeah, they're going to the beach. They're going to go out. They're going to say fuck the government. It well, is like what the, it is. Like, the, like It is funny to watch a guy with a mask move a mask up to smoke a cigarette yes, outside. That's that makes me laugh so fucking hard. What I love when I see a guy lift it up, he's smoking, and then he puts it back down as if, Dude, as if, as if the bug that yeah. the guy might have fifty feet from you is worse than the so cigarette. So that's why we got to run an experiment. And if 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 it really is a bloodbath and people really start falling down and the hospital system can't handle it, people, get, I'm staying in. Well, I'm me not and, really me, going. No, see, me yeah. and you were doing that thing. You know what we do? We do that. Um, yeah. What do they say? You know, when somebody finds God on their deathbed, isn't that what it, like? You find God on your deathbed is yeah, what they say, right? Because people, you know, there's a lot of times atheists are like, "Fuck the, uh, you know, fuck religion," right. da, da, da. and then you know they're getting cancer and yeah. they're an hour away and they're like, "Yeah, God, please save right. me." Right? Yeah. We, I follow the same line of like, look, do I believe this is a real thing? Yeah, of course. course. I I feel it. I see it. But I'm going to do what I can to stay. Like I have been staying home. I don't really see anybody. And at the same time, I do think what the media is doing every morning to me in my fucking inbox. Terrifying. Is terror, 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 terror. You, uh, That's how they're making uh, money. They're like, a guy got his leg cut off and a new New York Broadway actor had to cut off his leg because of... It's, I get why they do some of these things, but the sensationalism is why people are losing. It's terror and... Part of what the problem is right now is that there's the uncertainty. We don't know what it is. We don't yeah. know if this is natural. We don't know if it's a bioweapon. We don't know if it leaked out. Do you think lab. it's a bioweapon for real? It's potential. Of course I'll it's potential. The I'm saying, open. do you think it might be? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it could have been an experiment. It's a lot of coincidences. But what, But do you think it was a biochemical experiment that didn't have targets? I think it's something that we could, me, us in China could have worked on. I mean, we're all working on the same shit. You? Not me personally, but other people are working on the U- Yeah, the U.S.? The U.S. Yeah, but do you think that this had a target, or do you think it was just a global attack? It's hard to say that it's a target, because... Because Italy wouldn't have been picked. China's economy is shrinking. Yeah. I mean, they're going to be in trouble. I mean, diplomatic relations are going to sour with that country dramatically, mm. with every other country on the planet. Yeah. I can't put anything past anybody, but it's it's an interesting play. It really de- it decimates society in a very interesting way because, yeah, the percentage chance you're going to die is low, but it's enough that you're like, fuck, I don't yeah. want to go out. It's enough that it's scares enough everybody. to keep you out of a restaurant. When's the next time somebody's going to go to the original room in the comedy store, sit next to a stranger for an hour? It's I can't imagine that. Well, the, uh, I don't know, man. I, I hope, just can't imagine that. I th- I just think, well, it, we, what, I don't. I personally can't see people taking that chance. If, if they have a vaccination, then yeah, people will well, do it. That's sure. That's the, that's the, well, that's what move. I mean. That's a breaking point. That's a different, that's years away. I know, but people I'm saying, but that, yeah. will, that's the time when people that's be ultimately cra- comfortable. That's how crazy it is now. Right. Where it's like, people like, we're going to be on stage in May. It's like, I, how, why, what would change? I know. What would change between now and September? What if what they do that change? gap seating? You know, that gap seating that they're Doesn't talking matter. about? I know. But matters. that could give them more a sense of, Listen, man, it, it all depends. Listen, if it disappears, yeah, people are going to get back into things. But if it, if there's f- outbreaks, it, once you start knowing people that die, once you say to yourself, like, you know, fucking Tara's so husband, so. that guy was 36, yeah. he just dropped dead. Then you're going to go, yeah, well, we're not going out. Right. We're not going out. Yeah. New York, everyone's got that. LA, no one has it. New York, everyone's like, you know, Johnny's cousin's dead. His grandfather's dead. Like, Jesus. The people in their 60s, 50s, 40s, I mean- Listen, how many people under 40 are in the comedy store? Not a ton. No. Not a ton, right? No. A lot of it, you know, it's 30s, 40s. So, yeah, man, we're, we're in trouble. Live performance is in deep trouble I at know. the moment. Music, music. WME, more. all these agencies, there's a chance to go out of business. Well, they own a lot of other properties, especially people like WME. No, that's, they don't. That, they, make, the they, they primarily make money off live. The UFC is still live. Yeah. Um, the, the, the reality is like they, they're they losing all their packaging fees when they sell a show. They're not getting 10% right. of, or whatever their fee was. So I don't know, man. If it's if we're dark for a year, two years, can they sit around at their current size? I mean, they might stay in business, but they might have to shrink. Well, yeah, of course. Like they're gonna fi- yeah. yeah, they're going like to fire a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. going to fire a lot of people. Yeah. And a lot of clients, the client list will dwindle. And then the government's going to use this to grab a lot of power and a lot of rights. Right. From people. You think Trump had it? I don't know. I mean, I mean, that, that, that's impossible to say. I don't know. I think he did. Do you think he did? Yeah, I think I he think did. Biden might have had it. Biden's got it. Do you think Biden has it now? Yeah. Is that what they said? I think that's a rumor that's going around. He hasn't been around. Yeah, why is he disappearing so fast? He's got, he's got, the, he's got the bug. He got it. He's got it. He's got it. I mean, 
it's going to be a different world. What happened to Weinstein? Remember he had it and they didn't talk about it anymore? Yeah. Don't you find that interesting? There was a big article. They uh, pushed this whole big thing. He wanted to move moved from one prison cell to the other because he had it. Yeah. And now... He probably got over it or he was faking it. That's what I'm saying. I think... No, Could've but no, no, they tested it. him. Yeah, false positives. Who knows? They should have gave him a false positive and move him out. They could have same thing in, with the Tiger King guy. They could have brought in their own private doctor, like this fool that's running around LA. Oh yeah, he's got. It's like right. okay, <laughs> sure. Nobody knows today. Even though this episode is going to come out at the end of the week, to move to something more light, because yeah. otherwise we can go for hours and hours Two about hours. how. Uh, Four twenty means what to you? Nothing. Losers. Yeah, same. I mean, listen, man. Nobody, I hate that it's a day. My most controversial opinion that yeah. I've ever said, and I've said a lot of stuff where people have been upset. I'm pro eating dog. I've said that. I've said eating a dog is much <laughs> more natural than putting it in a stroller and pushing it down a street and pretending it's your child. Yeah. It's much more natural to eat it than right. to pretend it's your, your baby. But you don't want to do it personally. You're just no, okay with it. No, I want to. I, I, I wouldn't. I would taste dog. Mm. I'd be like, mm. what breed do you think? Oh, it'd have to be something fatty, little bulldog. Yeah, that's true. Buffalo <laughs> bulldog. Uh, one of my most controversial opinions is that weed's not for adults. Yeah, that's what I got a lot of flack for. Weeds for you'll never have more fun. And I tell people this all the time. I smoke weed from when I was 15 to when I was 25. You'll never have more fun than when you're 16 years old. You're going through like a Taco Bell drive-through, or you're sitting at the beach, or you're doing something. And you're smoking weed. You're not supposed to be... Now, obviously, guys like Rogan that are super fucking like machines that can do everything and accomplish everything no matter what they do, right. great. Most people aren't like that. Let's get real. Uh, it does affect your ambition. It yeah. does affect a lot of that shit. Yeah. Uh, you, you're not supposed to be a, a, a pothead in your 30s. Mm. It's unattractive. Yeah, there's something it's about it that's stupid. odd. Okay. Yeah. So here's my... Here's my I've been... I... I do you know me to smoke pot or no? No. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I use it extremely uh, sparingly, but when I do use it, it's with shame. Yeah, I feel bad about There's it. There's a shame. Yeah, I feel like should a bad. <laughs> you should you should smoke pot. My boss used to smoke pot. My boss at mortgages, and I barely knew. He goes, yeah. He goes, I take a hit sitting on my toilet at eleven thirty at night, and I go to sleep. Yeah. Or he goes, maybe I get baked on a Saturday when my kids aren't around and I'm fucking around in my yard. See, I like to use it sparingly. I like yeah. to use it at night like it's with a with a drink or something like that. That is what yeah. I like to do. But here's here's what I like to say. That's I'm I'm not all the way in on your side of it, but I understand what you mean. I understand what you say. Well, it's because I don't I don't you're think you're cocking for big weed. Yeah, I'm well, I'm a big weed I'm a, I, you know I I'm, will, I'm part of big weeds. I'm a, I'm part of their profit. You know, I'm I parade around I as a big weed guy. I will advertise for weed and mm -hmm. weed products and yeah. I have yeah, but I'm telling you personally, to be a pothead, to make it your identity, to have it be a big thing, yeah. it's never going to be as fun. You, it, all of this stuff now is it, what this really is. Is ca I never went to camp when I was a kid. I was regret like I, I it's a regret. Oh, and I would do oh, well, yeah, I did, I because guess. I'm like Sports I never camp. had that. I never had that. No, I always think about it like I never had the experience other kids had. I didn't go to college. I regret that. There's now adult summer camps for sick people. <laughs> they want to recapture that experience they never had. Yeah. There are, that's sick. If you're 35, leave college, dummy. It's, it's over. over. It's over. So to me, part of the, the weed thing is people being like, ooh, I'm 30. Right. And I want to be not, or I want to do something that I should have done when I was a child. Yeah. yeah. Well, here's what I think. Here's what, here's what I understand about what you're saying. I, I've been, I've been smoking pot since I'm 15 or 14 or 15 is when I first tried it. I'm 36 now, and I went through waves of college. I did it because you did drugs and da da da. Yeah. But now that I smoke pot, it's like a very occasional thing that I do to enjoy it for something very specific. I don't just do it to do it. Right. I never understood just doing it, doing it. To me, that'd be like, you know, doing taking any drug during the day or doing anything. To and I'm an addict, so like people come at me and they're like, "Well, you can't handle your drugs. That's why you don't like it." I'm like, "No, I'm pro other addictions. Right. I'm pro being a drunk. I'm pro t get a real addiction. Me. Be addicted to Percocet. Fun. Get a real be because this is what. You could be a 40-year-old woman who's crying the mascara off her face and bashing a car in and, and on perks. Right. That's fine. You, but you don't be a pothead at fucking 50. Right. Like, get a fucking, <laughs> get an addiction that's appropriate for your age. Yeah, you got to grow out of weed at some You got to grow out of, like, drinking looks, re, drinking publicly looks great. Until you're about 25, and then it starts looking great again at 50. Yeah, no, well, it's yes, your weird, latter half, it's the sexiest time. The 30, 40 is weird. Well, it's, To it's, be in a bar when you're in your mid-30, it's like- Alone. What, 
even with other people, it's kind of like, it's it's almost, not every now and then, but it's it's not as, listen, if I see a guy who's really bombed when he's in his 30s at a bar, like really going nuts, yeah. getting into it, I'm like, what is wrong with him? What's going on? What's going on? Yeah, what's deeper? But if I see a, a guy, salt and pepper hair, 50 years old, knocking back a fucking you know, waiting for a seeking arrangements date to get there. Perfect. Just so he can plow her out in a hotel and go on about his fucking business meeting life. <laughs> Great. There's a time to do things yeah. and there's a time to not do them. So weed is a young drug. Young drug. High school, college, a little after that. Perfect. And then once you figure out your career, put it away for a little put bit. Put it away. <laughs> put it away. Let it go. That's when you pick up. Yeah. Maybe a little booze, a little pills, a little cocaine every now and then. I, 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 a, 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 a judicious use of cocaine. But cocaine has to have a limited lifespan because if you get too far, you become... It has you to get, be judicious. Has to be judicious. Judicious. You're 27, little cocaine. Yeah. Not what about weed. when you crest 30? What about cocaine in your 30 crest? Rough. So, be very so careful. I think, I think the cutoff is about 32 because 33 is a magic number. That's when you start playing with that Addy. Yeah, that's when you, you have some have fun with the Addy. Adderall, right? little Adderall, little uppity duppers. But don't take it. You got to break, smash, and sniff. Smash it, sniff it. Smash and sniff. You got to have different... And I, and I truly believe, even though I'm kidding around, I don't. I use cocaine for a decade. I don't suggest it. But it, it makes more sense to me yeah. than other... Well, cocaine you know? is such a more high-functioning drug, right? Sure. Pot, when I get in conversation Adderall's with people, a big, too Adderall's high. a big, like, let's figure it out drug. Like oh, I don't, I, I, I don't love out, Adderall work, people. Work. I get I get uh, yeah. accused of being an Adderall guy. I've never used it one time. I don't like any drug people. Like in the sense that like I prefer now completely sober people. I prefer a boring life. See, I like um, I like functioning addicts. I don't mind them, but I don't want to know. Oh, I usually I don't, don't need to know. That's my favorite yeah, part. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't need to know. I could be lit up on this right now, and you would. Yeah, know the yeah, yeah. I I want people to just be a part of my life that are. Boring. I crave boring Boredom. people yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, I've had a lot. I used to love crazies. Yeah, everybody loves For the loves majority them. of my life. Now I'm start like the mileage, it's wearing thin on me. Right. Because, you know, listen, when you were a young kid, was there anything funner than sitting at some dirtbag corner bar and having some guy next to you tell you, you know, that, you know, you're like this guy, oh, that's crazy. That's crackhead Phil. Yeah. Oh, crackhead Phil's hilarious. Then you grow up and you're like, man, crackhead Phil had kids he didn't care for it's sad it's sad it's fun when you're young to look it's at. it's sad it's yeah. very fun and and then crazy people as you get older they get more annoying like i used to have tolerance for people calling me with their hair brain screen schemes yeah i thought it was great because i was outside smoking cigarettes be like ah, ah, ah. now i'm like <laughs> dude shut up yeah. it's not gonna work like did you ever have somebody when you were in your 20s that hung out with you that was in their mid to late 30s and you didn't yes. really you didn't think much about it then this guy but, howie i used to right. do mortgages with we used to do coke in his apartment and he would right. just tell me all these schemes and businesses he was going to start and like we hung out with a guy that was 42 when i was 20 <laughs> yeah, and yeah. i and i thought he was the most fun guy on earth there was but all he was was a destruct <sighs> he was just destroyed we had my friend's uncle we called him drunkle yeah drunkle would just fucking come and hang out and go to high school parties and play beer pong and he was like 38. But he was the king back then. He was the, but even then we're like, this is rough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> even then we're like, yeah. this is rough. But I think, I think we, we've destroyed age. Brett Easton Ellis made a good point the other day. He said, when he was growing up, it was an adult culture and you wanted to be an adult mm -hmm. because the culture is for adults. Now we all want to be kids. Now everybody, it's like an internal youth movement. Right. It's very strange. Look at how I dress. There's 40 year old, yeah, you dress like a child. I dress like There's a child. 40 year old women listening to Billy Eilert. It's like, grow up. No, we we don't want to grow up. No. We, you know why? Because the generation before us and their generation before them, yeah. they all grew up so fast Correct. that the fear was instilled into us that it's yeah. like, don't do that. Well, there's also part of... My grandfather wore a suit when he was nine. Part of us knows that this is the best it'll get. Part of us yeah. instinctively knows that like, this is the best it gets. And probably up until about a month and a half ago... It was, we were flying as high as you could fly. Dude, I said this the other as day, high I said the as same thing. Fly. I go, you know why this happened to us? Yeah. Because it's been, it's been uh, 12 years since 2008, right? Yeah. And before that was since 2001. Yeah. Things were so smooth. And I realized that one night on the road, I'm not kidding, uh, two months ago, I was going to go to Denver or something. And I was on the way to the airport. And I remember thinking, Joe had called me about tonight's gig. Yeah. We were going to do 420. Right. Tonight in Vancouver. And he had talked to me about the, the he's like, oh, you got to get the plans from the management. And we got it. And I was thinking about, wow, this is fucking great. I right. just played it. 
Like things were yeah. smooth, and I should yeah. have thought something's got to be coming. It was almost running too smoothly. I remember the it. trains were all. On I time. remember it. I had that thing. I was in the parking lot of Comedy Store, standing there with Ben, and the the, the shows were all packed, and I sold out, sold out. And I'm looking around at the parking lot, and there's Maseratis, and this and that, and this car, and that car, and cars. I don't even know what the fuck they are. And I, and I, there were law. And as me and Ben left, we walked past a line of people to get into the next show. Yeah. And I was like, we're at the height of this. And I said to him, I said that night, we're smoking cigarettes. I said, I don't know how long it lasts or how it ends, because I didn't know. So yeah. I don't know how long it lasts or how it ends, but I know that we are at the height of something now. We're, 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 because it can't get better. Couldn't get bigger either. It couldn't get bigger. It nope. couldn't get better. So I was like, we're at the top of it. And I was like, it's going to, but I never thought like, oh, it'll be a pandemic. I thought it might be a recession. It might be whatever, but I never knew it was going to be so, because that's what fucked everybody up. You, a recession, things taper off. Yeah. This was shut down immediately for an, un, an indefinite period of time where it's like, oh, you were living a life and then that life was ended immediately overnight and and nobody knows like even if yeah. they said hey you're all back in business september 1st as bad as that is we'd go we're doing a sentence we're doing a bid we get out september 1st nobody knows nobody knows if it's rolling shutdowns nobody knows what it is so like that was the thing so i think part of the eternal youth thing and part of the not growing up is i think we all were kind of in our heads being like oh we're gonna have to grow up yeah but we're it's just we're not gonna choose when somebody has to tell us when to grow and up. now this is when you grow up damn this is when you grow up now so what do you how, what do you think you think you think there's going to be a collapse of that part of culture that you're talking about like forty year old women listening to Billie Eilish is that stuff going to go by the wayside I don't know because the articles online would tell you no no of course the culture's harder to predict because uh, here's why yeah no matter what then this does make me smile in a weird sure. twisted way yeah I'll read my fucking timeline of news in the morning every single morning I sit and have coffee yeah and I read my timeline of news and inevitably in the middle of all this tragic tragic chaos chaos it'll be Chris Pratt and his wife, Nicole Sch Schwarzenegger, yeah. share fun beach stories. Like, yeah. it still is injected, and I guarantee you, those are getting lots of clicks. Of course, people need escapism. But that's not just escapism. What's, that's holding on to... The next two months are the most essential for the American economy, maybe ever. You, you know? think so? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think it's... I think... I, I just read a, an article that can kind of convinced me of that. Um, because I think the next two months will determine what's going to happen. They're going to determine whether we can kind of inch back towards normalization. Sure. Or if we're looking at 50% of hotels closed in America. See, I think it already 50 happened. 50% of restaurants closed. I think it already happened. Yeah. I think okay. they already decided. Yeah. I think they figured out really, really fast. Yeah. I think the reason the stimulus check went into, when it went into effect yeah. is because the government, the inside cats, figured out fast. They were like... We already know what this is going to look like forecasted for six, seven, eight months. Yeah, but then why do you give people twelve hundred bucks if you think it's seven? What is twelve hundred dollars? It's nothing. That's my point because right. it placated. What do you mean? It, it's it's a little. Here you go. What, yeah. what, do you, what do you think a tax return is? You know that, that was no, that, that was a mental ploy. Yeah. To give to the American public to go, hey, yeah. you're gonna get some money back, and they're like, I, oh yeah. shit, it's a it's a fake. I feeling. just I just wonder if we're heading towards Great Depression. Or if we're heading to prolonged, very painful recession, because there are there are big differences. I think right? rece recession for sure. Okay, because depression is is multi year, very long. I don't think that can be. I think we have yeah. too much money in our economy right now for that. To take how does place. it not happen though? How does it? How does how do we avoid a depression when you have half of Los Angeles out of work? I think we're gonna Nobody, force you're gonna yeah. force big industry to just give start giving money to things because yeah. they'll lose employees. So they're right. going to need to dole out, dole out, dole out, and pay and yeah. pay. We'll see what happens. But I think a lot of it's going to be the sentiment of people. Are people going out? Are people buying things? Are people terrified? If people are terrified and there's a run on the bank, it's going to be hard to avoid the the, the, the harder problem. And this will usher in, listen, this is going to usher in the government going, here's the deal. Mm. We are going to figure your life out for you. Yeah, You don't do it anymore. You don't own a car anymore. Right. You're not going to drive. I know. I heard you do we this on the interview. We have a fleet with... of self-driving cars. Right. They're sanitized. It makes sense. You're not getting in an Uber with another person. We have a fleet of self-driving cars. We have safe cities where you're not going to buy a house. You're going to buy into a city because we have all your needs met. 
Right. We have everything. We have healthcare. We have food delivery services. Retail's over. You're not going to shop. You're not going to buy things anymore. You're going to live in some kind of energy efficient, sterilized pod. And dude, Deutsche Bank, a guy that works at Deutsche Bank who sent me security credentials, he's like, yeah, we have meetings like this where they talk about this. He's like, we have meetings openly where we discuss 20, 30, we're going to be dead. But 20, 30 years down the road, <laughs> you know, you're, yeah. there will be no, the, you have no freedom. And they're going to look at your social media and go, yeah, you can't get into the city. You go, you why? What did I do? You, yeah. like, you posted six months ago. Yeah, you, po- you, know, you, you said a lot of things that you shouldn't have said. Fuck the government. You know, you said a lot of things you shouldn't have said. So it's like, outwardly, we're all like, China sucks. Internally in our government, we go, they're doing a lot of things we like. <laughs> they're doing a lot of things we like. <laughs> That's the reality. Do you think we're going to become that kind of state, this author- authoritarian It's unavoidable. State? Yeah? It's unavoidable. Yeah. This is the end of the free, like getting in a car and just going, you ain't, you know, nobody's tracking me. Nobody knows where I am. I'm just going to drive into this some town hit, and hit the road. Start idea. my life. Right. That's not going to happen. You're not going to have those options. You're you not going to have access to capital. arresting people that cross borders and stuff now? I don't know what will happen. I think, I, I think that under the guise of public health, yeah. they're going to clamp down, but we're not going to see a lot of it. Like you'll see the beginnings of it. Right. But it's it's like everything else. It's on. It's the long game. Everybody's playing the long game. The reason that they want to do a lot of this stuff is because they want to master AI and they want to have a competitive edge with China in AI. Mm-hmm. So what they're saying is, if China is implementing all these artificial intelligence systems and surveillance systems, they're going to export them to the rest of the world. They're going to sell everybody everything. We want to do that. So if they're doing fleets of self driving cars, we got to do that first. We got to discourage car right. ownership. Right. We got to tell people, you know, it's much more energy efficient and safer for you and the environment. To not have your own car. What hill do you die on? Do you go down swinging or do you just quietly go along with the program? How many decades do we have left on the planet? You know, I'm 35. You and me? Yeah. Probably four. Four? Right. Yeah. Who cares? Are you going to chip? What are they chip neck? Are you going to do a neck They're chip? not doing that for a while. No, but if they do, what if they implement it fast? I don't really want it. But that. they have the technology. I'm sure they do. They've had it for a long time. I don't want it. You don't want a chip? No. See, if they told me, yeah. let's chip your wrist, it's going to have your bank information, all that stuff, yeah. everything's going to be con- in one thing condensed. Good. Just get it over you with. You want a chip in you? Hey, let's go. Throw I mean, me in the ocean. Dude, how do you know that they they don't... What are they going to do? How do you know that chip in five years is not going to kill you? Might. Yeah. Yeah, chip me. I mean, I, 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 I don't go there. I go, let's not do the chip. Chip me. I don't need my bank account information in my wrist. Chip I remember. Chip me. Chip me. Really? Chip me. Chip me. You're kind of a fatalist. You don't... You I just go. don't... What, what am I going to do? It's over. Yeah. At some point, it's over. Right. Well... It, they're going to get me. It's over. Right, but I could still not want it. This I is mean, it. They chipped you already. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they chipped you here. Yeah. Why not just let them chip you here? I just don't want them to shut you off. What if they give it to you to do yourself? Is that going to feel better? No, because they can. Sh- I don't want them shutting you off. I can still throw this in the river. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah, but they'll know you threw it in the river. And I'll ask you why. Not yet. <laughs> but soon. Tim, you lost your phone. It yeah. fell in the river. Is there a reason for that? We've been listening to you. Yeah. I mean, soon they will. But it's like one of those things where it's like, I agree with you. There's only so much you can resist. Yeah. They're, but they're I'm not, I'm not going to walk. Like happily into getting a chip. I will. Yeah. You yeah. don't want it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Well, I mean. No, I don't. In reality, all jokes aside, I I, I don't, I would never want anything like that because I, I hate yeah. big government. Yeah. But also, they're, they're going to fuck you. They're going to get you. They're going to sell it in a very interesting way, too. They're going to be like, hey, if you collapse in a Walmart, we're going to know what you're taking, What you, what's the problem. Well, we also want to know your, your heart rate. Dude, you know who already did? They, yeah. This is our, they, the yeah. Apple Watch. The Apple Watch. Yeah. Dude, the Apple Watch. Yeah. is the ultimate tracking device because you sacrifice all this information. Yes. If we Can all, we follow your yeah. health? If we all trusted the government, if we didn't find out that a bunch of politicians were on an island, fucking kids. If if How many islands, by the way? I'm sure tons. Isn't that crazy? But here's the thing. If we trusted the government... And and we which we never will we're we're a fuck the government country but if then if we believe they were a benevolent good presence we would be like okay yeah put all my Medicaid you know right but because we don't trust them and we know that they lie and they manipulate and they do things that we would never allow them to do if we we had any say in it then like yeah I don't want you being able to reach into my fucking DNA it's fucking wild it's fucking crazy but it's all coming yeah it's happening it's coming which is too many people. There's, it's too, I mean, a city like Los Angeles, you go, it's unsustainable. No. It's barely any water. Yeah. The grass is fake. Everything's Everything. fake. It's a desert. It's a desert. When you look at a picture of this place from 1930, yeah. Yeah. it's a desert. We built an entire city that's fake. So it's like, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's good. There. What are you going to do eventually? What, what about the people in, have you, you, all these uh, all these people that have gone out and done all these protests, land of the free, give back. Half of these people are getting carded online as a Trump supporters. Yeah. Just because I think that's easy to tag. Yeah. 
But you're you, you're in bed with Q. You know all about the Qs, baby. Uh, yeah, I know about them. You're in bed with the Qs. These they're out taking the streets, saying that this is all a hoax. And here's what motivates Q. Here's what motivates all this shit. Yeah, people haven't admitted that it's over. People they, haven't admitted that they're it's over. They're, they're holding lost. on. They lost. So the idea of like Trump being this avatar of of of, of freedom and like he's gonna do it, he's gonna free all the kids, he's going against his own, he's going against rich billionaires. It's like you gotta laugh. In history, when they look back, they're like, who's the guy that they thought was going after the billionaires? It's gonna be like, oh, this guy who lived in a gold apartment right. at the top of the building <laughs> that he owned, right. who was a, a wrestling heel who yep. owned the Miss America pageant. They were like, that's the guy they thought was going at human traffickers. Yeah. The guy who oh, I ran a modeling agency. Yeah. Like that's the guy like dude people want to believe in some positive hopeful thing and the reality is the only the only positive hopeful thing is like it's you this is what people don't get yeah. it's nothing it's it's nothing we're here for an indefinite period of time the only thing that you can depend on is get smarter get better at things make yourself into something Everything else doesn't matter. It's all fake. Right. Politics is fake. Right. People get mad at me when I say that. It doesn't exist. It's like you watch it. You're like, no, no, no. Oh, Nancy Pelosi. It's fake. It's not real, <laughs> dummy. Yeah. yeah, it's all made it up. It doesn't exist. Did you, have you ever seen Nancy Pelosi? Nancy Pelosi is Robin Wright Penn to you. <laughs> You've never seen her. Yeah. It's nothing to do with your life. Trump. Does, if you went outside of one of Trump's resorts, any of these fat people from Ohio that think he cares about you, if you were anywhere near his resort, he'd have guys with guns move you off the property. Yeah, they kill you right away. He doesn't care about you. Obama didn't care about you. Grow the fuck up. I barely care about my cousin. I saw my cousin on a New York City subway. I went to the other car. I said, I don't want to talk to this guy. No. How you doing? Your mom's good. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She had a thing <laughs> with her foot. Is that better? No one gives a shit. You care yeah. about so few people. And this idea, like politics is a very, it's like a ridiculous, somewhat womanly pursuit. Like it's almost like, and I don't mean womanly in a gendered negative way. I mean, womanly in the sense of like, it's star magazine. It's like, what's Chris Pratt doing? It's the same shit. Right. None of it truly matters. The 90 lizards that own this country don't give a fuck who wins the presidential elect. Right. They barely care. <laughs> I, I mean, it is what it is. So yeah. go to the beach, go swimming, Get your dick wet. Take whatever drug you think you have can fun. handle. Eat something good. Have fun. It's you. Like the only hope is you. Is you realizing like I can't believe I'm even here. Yeah. I can't believe I'm even here. Because when it's over, it's over. It's over. It's over. And you go. I can't believe I'm even here. Everything's at night. Every time I get in a car and drive down the street, I could get fucking killed. Yeah. And it's through no fault of my own. I could just somebody could rear end you. How many times do you drive late at night in L.A. through an intersection? You go. Is this the night? All the time. Because it's so quiet, yeah. like late at night, you go, is this the T-bone night? I've had, a, I've had a couple of moments where I go through, like, I, have you ever had that where you drive a long time and you doze off a little bit? And yeah. You wake up and you're like, that could have been it. That would have been it. It would have been it. Seconds. Dude, so the only hope is not, is internal. You. It's like you, 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 you got to say to yourself, fuck, I want to learn a language or I want to lose weight or I want to be this or I want to master an instrument. Just figure out a way to spend your fucking time. If you want to spend your time on Reddit, uh, 4chan, inventing <laughs> ideas that, that Donald Trump, if you if that's a community that you need to be a part of, I don't judge you. Yeah. I'm not the Q people are people that got red pilled. Like they figured out that the world was fucked overnight and it melted their minds. Yeah. They're like, wait a minute, politicians are fucking kids and they're lying and they're stealing and they're killing. Yeah. Go yeah. read about Rome. It's the same shit. Yeah. Yeah, they fuck whatever they want. They kill you if you talk. Right. Now, yeah, stop it. But you're not stop writing a little thread isn't changing the world. If you want to change the world, do I don't know, form a militia. In here, we pour whiskey. Whisk. Listen up, whiskey ginger fans. If you are a fan of listening to good tunes, whether it's listening to this podcast or listening to music, uh, the suggestion I have for you is to use Raycon headphones. Raycon are great. I've told you this before. I, I am highly promotional of them. They're half the price of these expensive Bluetooth uh, wireless headphones that are getting pushed around the market right now that are overpriced. And, and quite frankly, they don't deliver half of the sound um, that Raycons do. Raycon are awesome. They fit right in your ear. The E25 earbuds, they're the best ones yet. But there's six hours of continuous playtime. So if you're out for a run, I'm sure you're not running more than six hours. Uh, and if you are, what are you doing, bro? Chill out. You, like, take a break for a little bit, you know? Hang out for a little bit. 
Um, but they're they're super comfortable. Come with all different resizing. Uh, these cushion resizers so you can, you know, fit them into your ear perfectly. Um, Snoop Dogg endorses them. And Cardi B. So, you know, pretty good if those two musical artists like it. Very different, different styles. Cardi B. This Rona. Rona's out here making people go nuts. But... Uh, they are great headphones. Uh, a, a significant amount of bass in them, too, if you like that hip-hop music, like I do. It's uh, noise-isolating. It's a beautiful fit. I, I love these things. Um, so now's the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon headphones. Get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash whiskey. That's buyraycon.com slash whiskey for 15% off of Raycon wireless earbuds. Buyraycon.com. Not the baby. Buyraycon.com. Slash whiskey. Whiskey ginger fans, if you're having a drink virtually, of course, at your home, safely distancing from other human beings, you should pick up a bottle of screwball whiskey. This stuff is good. Screwball peanut butter whiskey goes down very smooth. It's warm and welcoming. Got a smooth palate, man. Uh, this stuff is really good. I've had the screwball whiskey in the whiskey in the past. I've talked about it. Uh, if you consider yourself uh, anything out of the ordinary. Screwball is just that. You will like it. Uh, as a whiskey fan, I do think it tastes nice and sweet. You can do it as a shot. You can put it with some ice cream uh, as an after-dinner ap uh, aperitif. Uh, it's, it's really good, man. It was uh, invented uh, by the owners of the Obi Noodle House here in Southern California in San Diego. Uh, and it grew. The brand grew because people started to like this stuff. So they put it out to the real world. And it's born born down there in Southern California. And it's it's quite delicious, man. I, I highly do uh, promote this stuff because it's good to pour over. I like pouring it over some ice cream. I poured it over some ice cream the few times that I've had it because it's got that sweet but also has that uh, delicious, smooth caramel whiskey just to, just to tuck you into bed nice at the end of a long, arduous day. Um, and Screwball Whiskey is doing some good stuff, which I... Absolutely uh, am happy about that they're in support of what's going on right now because of COVID. Um, they're donating a ton of money. Uh, they're also giving away uh, uh, high-proof uh, liquor that people are doing for hand sanitizer to people in the health industry or nonprofit organizations, which, again, I'm, uh, I'm big into. And they've donated a quarter of a million to the U.S. Bartender Guild, uh, which is awesome. A hundred grand to children of restaurant employees. A hundred grand to California Restaur Restaurant Association. They prepared over 1,000 packages of those uh, necessities for people in the San Diego area. Um, they're donating hand sanitizer and all sorts of stuff to hospitals, police, and firefighters and more. So I appreciate people that do cool stuff like that during tough times. Um, this is the original most awarded peanut butter whiskey on the market. It's available anywhere near you. It's 70 proof. Screwball peanut butter whiskey is the perfect shot, perfect addition to your favorite cocktail. Pick it up at your local store. Get it delivered to your house today, which is also awesome. They can bring it to your front door. Uh, go ahead and get screwed, my friends. Go to screwballwhiskey.com for much more information. Please drink responsibly. Don't be an idiot. Um, advertising by Screwball Spirits, LLC, San Marcos, California. Whiskey with natural flavors and caramel color. 35% alcohol by volume. Sip it up. Back to the episode. Ginger. I like gingers. How, how meta is this? Sometimes they write those threads about the thing, and it's so popular within the thing. Like, remember yeah. the movie Spotlight? Yeah. We spotlights about like calling out the Catholic Church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucking, they loved it. They awarded it. They praised it. All this yeah. stuff. Didn't do anything. Did that, that, that doesn't matter. No one cares. Because it's inside the sick the sick thing already. Right. You're making fun of the other sick thing. You're in the sick You're thing. You're in the thing. Yeah. So to me, I'm like, not to be a total nihilist, but treat people you like well. Are you not, are you nihilistic? I mean, I'm I don't. Genuinely? I don't, I don't think I'm a nihilist, but I, I'm, I don't believe I believe most of what we experience is some type of simulation. You like believe I'm, in sim theory. Not sim theory, but I do believe that when you wake up to when you go to bed, you're barely, uh, only a few thoughts you're on. Right. As soon as you wake up, this is going, here's what to think. This is it. This is it. I mean, before that, it was TV. Yeah. Before that, it was like, you're. Uh, there's very few thoughts you actually have that are not being programmed. Tech you gotta, technology has been the yeah, crux of that. Yeah, it just programs you. So you got to break the matrix a little bit. And there's very few people that are willing to do that. And, you know, so I always think that's why I'm a comedian because I'm like, what job can I do where I feel as far away? Like, I feel like I'm outside of things. 
yeah. which I want to be. I want to be outside and I want to be able to look at it all and be able to be like, shit, that's interesting. Oh shit, I have this person on my podcast. That's an interesting thing. Was, ma- was making people laugh the first intonation or was it because you just wanted to be No, making society? people laugh because I was good at it, right? So it was funny. Yeah, but outside of that, once you get over the idea that you can make yeah. people laugh, then it becomes that. Yeah, then it becomes you that. You want to be separate from I want to be outside. I want to be outside. I don't want to be in a corporation where it's like, we're doing a 5K and it's yeah. like, I love Prudential. Yeah. I love Prudential Security. It's like, what? I want to be as independent as I can. Like these people that are like, you know, all of these institutions that you got to go in and be like, Remax Real Estate saved my life. It's like, what are you saying? What? What? Selling split levels in Fresno saved your life? Well, then kill yourself. <laughs> but that's what it is. You get a brand. But we need them. We need them. Because we need most people. people are very simple and they need some. Life is about something to do. Right. Life's just about something to do. Everyone gets mad at everyone else. People are bored and they need something to do. People talk shit about me online. None of it bothers me. You need something to do. I get it. What do they say about you? They say all these things that aren't true, that I'm fat, uh, that I'm loud. It's not true. All of these lies. No, but they they can say whatever. None of it, all of it is like, listen, you need something to do. I get it, dude. What's your something to do when you don't have comedy? That's the problem. Do you feel that right now? Do you feel it? Yeah, I feel it a little bit. I still, I still do the podcast. I still make these videos, but yeah, it's a tough adjustment. Um, I'm, I'm, my something to do now is starting to think about what the future of my life. I don't want to ever go back on the road the way I was on the road. Why? I don't want to be on a plane every Thursday. I don't want to be doing that anymore. I feel like I don't want to do that. I was missing out on a lot of things. I want to build my podcast till it's a lot bigger. I still want to go on the road, but I don't want to. I don't want it to be as hectic and as crazy as it was. I want to route my dates. Like when I go back, I want to do one-nighters. I want to route them. I want to go away for like 10 days and do like Tim Dillon does the South and then come back to LA and hang for two or three months. So because And then do a weekend every now and then. What's the purpose of doing the road then there? Just financial? Well, it's performing. and Because you're going to perform here in town all the I'm time. I'm going to perform. I want to perform, man. But listen, I I don't... This whole thing has made me think about like how much of me performing is benefiting my audience and myself or how much of it is benefiting a club? If I go into a club and I get a shit deal and they put up a host and a feature who suck and my fans have to sit through 45 minutes of garbage before I get up, <laughs> who's be- that benefiting? Yeah. Truly, these are archaic systems. Who's that benefiting? And then I sell 1,200 tickets and they go, damn, if you sold 1,250, you would have got the bonus. But don't and I'm like, that- I gross 30 grand for you. What are we doing? Right. But it's an archaic system. It is, but don't you also think with time and because of the yeah. growth- you're going to eventually take over that where it's your own show that you do whatever you want. Yeah, but that can happen now. Life is now. Right. We're, we're all this bullshit. Like, uh, I sold 1,200 tickets. I'm there. This whole idea that like, but in time, paying we're all sold dues. on this in time and right. paying you It's fake. Right. It's not real. It's made up by the we system. We give the power to these people to tell us how we have to do it. We actually don't have to do it that way. Right. I don't have to go to your club and do seven shows in morning radio and walk out with three grand even though I made $30,000 in gross ticket. No, none of that's real. It's the power power that we gave you it doesn't exist you're going out of business i don't care my fans don't care <laughs> i'm making money now without anyone without my agent without right. my manager without i'm talking and making money it's fake and i don't i'm not i'm not going to participate again in like pretend world after this right i'm gonna do what i want to do and, and and live the life i want to live and perform for the people that want to see me and i don't give a fuck about the game and well it looks good and well it's a good look to shut right, up right. what look who's he's looking an o- he's an old friend yeah are you building equity my favorite thing my agent's like well you, are you building equity with these clubs fuck you yeah I could be dead I could be building equity for what for what right stop it's like the, the pers- that's what this has made me see that our business is is predators right there's a very small percentage of talented people in our fucking business and everybody else is a predator that sinks their teeth into those people and makes makes those people believe that they are necessary. They are not. And nothing has showed that more than these four months. If you're on if you're homeless now, yeah, they were necessary. But if you're doing okay and you're able to go out and online and monetize shit, they were never necessary. Right. This is unmasking that I, I, to a degree that I think I don't know how it's gonna be hard to come back from. Yeah. For a lot of us. A lot of us are going to look at the business relationships we have and go, yeah, so that went dark for six months and I was still doing okay. Right. And I need to give you money now. Why? There's a certain percentage of people that will get away with that for sure. But then yeah. the other side of it is there's people that just literally are drowning 
without yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Like, and that's uh, and I feel bad for those people because I don't think this is ever going to come back in the way that it was. Right. I don't think it'll ever come back the way it was. Do you think? Th- do you think we're looking at eighteen months before they go back to full scale production? What do you think? Is that de- the death of television? I don't know if it's the death of television, but I mean, it's like all the people that the industry loved. They were on all the right lists. They were had all the traction. They're on Cameo right now, wishing people happy birthday. Isn't just, that wild to, to watch? eat lunch? Yeah. So it's like, hey guys, when you're entire Nick Mullen is a great podcaster, made a great point. He goes, all these woke comics that are seeding all the podcast stuff to these people that they supposedly don't like or whatever, you guys are actually you're all you're you're diverse and woke and new. Everything's about being new, but you're embracing the oldest, most archaic model of business ever. Right. And you're relying on mega corporations. So you're woke and diverse, but you're actually you're relying on Netflix and Amazon and Hulu and whoever and, and ABC, NBC, CBS to be woke and diverse. Whereas you could actually go to the market directly. And so what happens when the industry folds or they move on from woke? Go, you know, Joker made a lot of money, Roseanne made money, fuck the woke shit. So it's like you allowed the industry to completely hold you in the palm of your hand and then discard you. Now what are you going to do? Right. So that's the whole thing. So uh, my whole thing now is like, we've seen the truth. You've gone behind the thing. You've seen the wizard. Yeah. I'm not, it's not like I'm firing my agent or whatever. It's just like, now I feel more powerful in the, you know, my agent's assistant called me the other day. He's like, let's reschedule some of these funny bone dates. And I'm like, not right now, not right now. Let's yeah. see what happens. I'm not going to lie to my audience and tell them shows are happening in June. They're not happening. They go buy tickets and they call me like, hey, what's a refund policy? And I'm like, I have no fucking idea. So I'm like, I'm only, I'm, I'm, I'm just going directly to them now. And when things are back up and running, I'll go back to some of those rooms. I'm not saying anything negative about specific club. It's, 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 it's that idea of I, I want to make sure that whatever I'm doing now, my fans get the most out of it and I get the most. I'm not going through the motions anymore. You know, it felt like it gave you a lot of perspective. Yeah. No, it's truly though. Yeah. Most people have gained a little bit of perspective. You yeah. sound like you've re, like completely re-engineered your idea. Oh yeah, I've re-engineered. I want to be in LA doing my doing my show. I want to probably take it to two or three days a week eventually. I want to have a studio. Right. I want to have Ben and me and Ben make shit. And, and then I want to go on the road. When I want to go on the road, I'm going to fucking go on the road. And I'm going to do it how I want to do it. Right. Because that's the way what it is. What about not doing clubs at all anymore? That's going to happen. Just play rock venues. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. That's, that's what's... That's the easiest there's way There's certain to clubs I love... But it's like, I'm not going an hour outside of a city anymore to entertain people that are, just, you know, it's like, I'm one of the last generations of people to kind of come up through that system. A lot of people aren't even doing that now. A lot of people are like, not even going it. They're just going in on a Wednesday night and selling out two shows. Well, that's like because, I have well, fans. That's what I was just going to say. When we talked yeah. about before, that was what was happening. Right. I don't know if that's going to continue after this thing is over. Well, who That's knows? my point. I think that shift. Yeah. I think that shift will dominate it, it will dominate the, the the system now so much to going, hey man, all we can do yeah. is pay a guy that can sell out. Well, yeah. That's my thing is I, I don't think anymore if that If you that's think about the, this pandemic, whatever you want to call it, this is just an acceleration of everything that was happening before. Mm-hmm. It just speeds everything up. It's like going through puberty in a day. Yeah. Everything was going to happen. This It's just happening it's a lot now. quicker. It's yeah. here now. And so I'm like, Looking at everything different. I'm looking at my life differently, my mortality, my time. I'm 35. What are you doing differently in the morning? Like in, in the course of your day? Are I'm taking phys- very long walks. It's, I haven't taken very long. I'm taking four or five mile walks through Beverly Hills. I'm looking at all these wealthy people and, and rich people and all these big fucking houses and shit. And I'm like, you know, they all got this shit because they saw that it was kind of like just they could have it. Right. They just walked around a place like this. When yeah, I can have this, and they had it. Like some of them got lucky, whatever. But like a lot of it is just, you know, like I'm saying, like I'm not doing. I'm saying I'm probably not going to go back to seven show club weekends because I'm like not always. I'll do so, some of them, but it's releasing myself from the fear because a lot of it was fear based. I realized that I'm like so much. Everything's fear based. Well, I can't get rid of this person. I can't get rid Our of that. whole business. Is All the talents in me. It's right. everything is fear. So I'm getting rid of that and walking around Beverly Hills every day. This is a fucking fucked up American materialist piece of shit way to have this realization. But I'm like looking at all these houses and all these rich fucks. And I'm like, dude, none of these people, here's what you're going to realize. If you're not retarded, and I'm not retarded, but there's a lot of people out there that are dumb. <laughs> but if you're not dumb, you look at that house in Beverly Hills and you go, that guy's not that much smarter than me. No. And in fact, that guy might even be less intelligent in, in many respects, but he just figured something out. He figured it out. He figured it That's out. That's it. And, and, and I got to figure it out. And the problem is I've outsourced too much of figuring it out yep. to other people who have yes. an interest in me figuring it out a certain way. Right. So it's a financial interest. Go, this is the way it's been done because this is the way it's always been done. And this is the way, and, and I'm like, no, no, no. 
that's fucked and I'm going to figure it out. Right. So part of it is just taking those dumb long walks and being like, yeah, what is this idiot with a $20 million house? He's not smarter than another person. No. Money is not indicative of intelligence. It's not real. Yeah. That's the other thing about money. It's like, oh, they just printed $2 trillion. Oil <laughs> is now zero, but it's still 283 at the yeah, pump. It's, it's real. It's, it's all fake. It's all fake. Give in to that yeah. and it, you'll actually do better. When, when you learn that you just have to figure out a thing, here's what I, I, I've said this before. When I, Owning a house for the first time in my life was a crazy leap for me. And I was always scared of like the unknowns and how do you deal with that shit? And I don't know who to call. Yeah. And then when you talk to some of these people that do the things that you notably can't do, yeah. right? You learn about how people figure out things. Yeah. Right? Like the guy, the contractor that's helping me with this, this thing in my house. Yeah. He knows a lot, a yeah. lot about yeah. these things. He knows. But there's other things that I know way more than he fucking would ever of know. Of course. So he just figured out his fucking thing. Just figured it out. And then if you can get other people to know that you've got the, the keys, yeah. then you can make tons of money on them. That's really what all this is. Those people in those houses in Beverly Hills, yeah. it's not that they're fucking geniuses. No. It's that they go, oh, I get it. A lot of it. our friends live in canyons and shit, and then sometimes I'll talk to them and they're like, oh, Beverly Hills has neighbors. Even Joe said that. He's like, Beverly Hills neighbor. Beverly Hills what? He goes, Beverly Hills has neighbors and anyone can walk up to the house. Here's the thing. Number one, we're a social species. Number two, people like neighbors. Yeah. Number three, part of the reason some of those fuckers are rich is because they're a neighbor. Yeah. A guy comes over to them and goes, hey, I'm I'm trying to figure out this. Can you help me here? Can you help me there? So it's, do you build a community of people that are, 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 are fucking figuring shit out or do you build a community of people that are not figuring it out or have some perverse incentive in you not figuring it Your out? Your neighbors mean a lot. Your neighbors go, mean a lot, go talk man. To a guy, go talk to a guy that went to a community We forget college. that. We forget that because we're yeah. kind of islands. Yeah. And even though our neighbors mean things, our own island, it's more important that we keep, our, you know, but dude, all islands matter, though. All, all, yeah, the, all the, that shit. All that shit matters, though. So you, got, you yeah. got to have you got to have the circle around you yes. as well as your own isolation. Yeah, Joe wouldn't be able to live in the middle of nowhere and not in neighbors of Beverly Hills, but yeah. he also has to associate with them to continue this thing growing. Yeah, I'm also old money, and a lot of our friends are new money, and that's a big difference right. because I really do appreciate a good a good marble, a good dark wood. How old is you? I mean, how much is your trust? My family yeah. came to America in the 1600s. Really? Yes. Wow. They were they were witches and they sold uh, 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 elixirs and they sold little things that would light on fire. And and we grew that into a business and we started doing natural resources, minerals. I have 1.2 billion in a trust right now. And how much can you access on a monthly or I, yearly I basis? I cannot access any of it until I go back on keto. Now, this is something that- Is that a punishment? Yeah. No, the attorneys have wrote that in because- uh, my family has written, and this is illegal, uh, that they don't want a fat slob running around L.A. with their money. That was their, written down? It's illegal. It's, 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 it's legal language. They yeah, say a, that's crazy. a fat, disgusting slob running around L.A. with their money. They would rather somebody who is a little more svelte. So I have to go on keto for 12 months of keto, and I have to piss in the strips, and then I get the money. And th But will you get that as a whole, or do you get it still stipend out? It will be it will be stipend out, but it'll be $300 million every four weeks, which was fine. Mm-hmm. It's not great. It's I not said great, fine. but it's fine. That's why I use the word fine. What's your, what? What do you think is your first big purchase when you make a big chunk of money? The cast of Tiger King. I will buy. You buy I all will of them? buy all of them. What are you going to do with the with the actual look of the business? Oh, the zoo. Yeah, I don't know. I'll probably put people in it. I would love. By the way, there'd be nothing funnier to me <laughs> than a zoo with people. The thing with Tiger King is like everyone had those people on. It's kind of interesting. On podcasts, they did a bunch of podcasts. Yeah, they, they yeah, went that was around. Wild. Everybody, went I couldn't around. believe that they. How many people were quick to get them on a podcast? Yeah, man, people, people want everybody want. That's the other thing I realized through this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to do what everyone else is doing. This is, and it's not a knock on people. Yeah, it's just deep. Like the reason Rogan did, it, he did a thing no one was doing. We're all doing a thing everyone's doing. We're doing it well, but. He did a thing that no one was doing. Hmm. You got to do the thing that no one's doing. Yeah. Someone right now is doing the thing that no one's doing that's going to do it really amazingly and make a lot of money. Sure. So that's what I realized with that whole Tiger King thing. I'm like, it's just so in our nature to just see someone doing something and go, yeah, let's do that, which makes yeah. sense. But finding out what people aren't doing and then having people call you crazy and go, what are you doing? That is such a different... Do people call you crazy? No. I mean, they don't like... But I'm saying like people... That like, you know, there's somebody doing something now where people are going, dude, what the fuck are you doing? And in five years, we're all going to go, oh. Like, dude, I remember when Twitter first came out, people were like, dude, you're going to put your jokes out for free? You're an idiot. You know? I still feel that way. I remember when Instagram came out, 
people were like, what are you, an idiot? Like, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna do an Instagram story? What are you, nuts? And now look at what these things are. I mean, people are making a living by using these systems. Yeah, but I still think they're fucked up. Yeah, but that's, I think giving away so much content for free has damaged our content. I agree with you, but we're living in the ruins. It's yeah. a free-for-all. Tucker Carlson did a segment the other day. He goes, the entire intelligence community is on the same page. This is a Chinese bioweapon. Three months ago, Tucker Carlson was calling the intelligence community a idiots. bunch of scoundrels <laughs> yeah, and idiots, idiots because yeah. they were all saying that Trump and Russia were in bed. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a free-for-all. Yeah. That's what drives people crazy. The total death of authority. It's but, a free-for-all. But that's the most democratic. Any, yeah, it's exactly right. Yeah. Anyone right now, everyone's just saying what they can, grabbing the last little bit of money and trying to hoard it and go, it's a free-for-all. And that's what drives people nuts. That's when the Q comes in and the religion comes in and everything comes in because they go, no, 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 no. There's an overarching, it's got to make sense, right. right? And you go, no, 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 it's chaos. It's pure chaos until it just ends. And you right. go, what? Most people can't handle that. <laughs> they put a gun in the mouth. They do something. They just go get bombed. They do whatever. But it's like, it's shitty. I have a problem. We all have a problem handling it. We all have our vices, right? Yeah. What is a vice? A vice is just... It's, it's a way to maintain that it's, it's something with chaos. So this going in a glass or a weed and, you know, a cigarette in your mouth, whatever it is, it's just a way to go, okay, there's less chaos when I do this. Right. Because I know I'm going to do this tomorrow. Right. So that's what a vice is. It's just a way to introduce well, some type gives, of regularity. It, it, well, yeah, and, and, and we love routine. Whether we love we'll it. Admit it we, it's our favorite thing in the world. So, but, so the breaking of all this and the, the breaking of all this has made me kind of realize how fake, like I always knew things were fake, but now I'm like, oh God, everything's fake. Yeah. What's Every the most fake to you? What's been revealed as the most fake to you? Through all the shit, other than the business you're in, which you knew was fake, but now it's now it's cemented as fake. Money, money's the most fake. M maybe the most fake. Yeah, because of of of. Uh, look at that's that's funny because I, I read that article this morning about yeah uh, uh, Shake Shack giving back their their PPP loan. It's all. But isn't that wonderful? Two trillion. I mean, these are, all they're doing is saying, hey, yeah. It's it. This is about as real as us getting it. From you look you. at that price of a house, and they're like, "This house in Bel Air is a hundred million dollars." You're like, "Oh, it's fake." Yeah, like a hundred million dollars means nothing. Absolutely nothing. It means nothing. It might as well be a good bazillion gabooblet. Like it doesn't matter. <laughs> it, none of it matters. It doesn't matter. Gabooblets. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't make anything. Right. It doesn't mean anything. Do you? Are you afraid of a collapse of a banking system? Yeah, as, as afraid as you should be. Not overly afraid. I mean, we're living. We're living in a time now where it's like to be afraid is almost insane, and to be unafraid is insane. It's like to 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 be too to be too terrified or to be right. not terrified. I mean, they're the same thing. It's like it's an even keel. Like like the way to l approach this time is is the nineties. Got to go back to the nineties. Yeah, the nineties. We all portray every president was portrayed in every movie as an idiot. Yeah. Okay. It was like a doofus. But it was always so funny. It was hilarious. Yeah. Barely knew anything. <laughs> yeah. People in the 90s didn't give a shit about anything. They, they didn't care. Right. They were divorced from it all. If you started a, a political conversation in the 90s, people would look at you like you're insane. They didn't care. <laughs> their their thoughts, it's like it, none of it mattered. It was this total release. It was after the Cold War ended, it was the result of like not having to care. Right. Not being locked in this power struggle with this evil force or whatever. I'm, you know, purportedly evil. It was this idea. That we were living in this post Cold War paradigm where like pe things were good, money was coming in. Of course, not for everybody. And then, but and then 9 11 happened, and then yeah. everyone's like, oh, we're back. Right. The way to deal with this now is well, the 90s. Iraq, 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 Iraq became no this thing. No one cared. Yeah, I know. Isn't that funny? No one cared. No one cared. It was fake. It they was were fake. like, ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was fake. Everybody's like, yeah, I work at a coffee house. I make no money. I'm strumming guitar. I'm, I'm working on myself. I'm right. getting into bullshit. None of it matters. I don't care. Part of the way to deal with this this world right now to not lose your mind is adopt that 90s mentality. Shrug. Shrug a lot. Start shrugging. People start talking like this guy. Eh. Yeah. Well, Who cares? Yeah, yeah. Is it a bioweapon? Who cares? Yeah. Eat a French toast stick. It doesn't <laughs> matter. That's a bioweapon. Yeah. What is it, Matt? Like, you're investing yourself in all this shit. The people that are invested in it are just selling you ideas. They're making money. Tucker Carlson lives in a beautiful home because he's ginning you up, revving you up. MSNBC, Rachel Maddow, same thing. They're all making you crazy for no reason. Turn it off. It's not real. Turn it off. Everyone's like, Trump, Russia. Turn it off. Didn't happen. Right. Isn't that amazing? Because it's over now. <laughs> yeah. They don't even talk about it anymore. No, it's in the past. So if you didn't watch it for two years, it would be like, you didn't. it would be like, oh, I didn't see the Americans on FX. Is it good? It didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't happen. Walter White doesn't exist if you don't watch Breaking Bad. So it's all the people that say they hate Trump secretly love him because they need him. He's their life force. Yeah, you, yeah. 
So I'm like, just turn it off. Just turn it off. Watch another show. You, you go, know, oh, my, I don't like Trump Russia. I want to watch uh, The Sopranos. This is my favorite thing to do. I, I saw this today. Yeah. I go, all, all the people that say, all the people that I'm, uh, you know, that you're friends with in comedy or whatever, the people that follow Trump online, this is the funny, the same people that do the endless, yeah. all day long, endlessly talk endless, shit about yeah, him, yeah. which is almost everybody we know. Everyone, that's, that's, yeah, that's the way it goes. But you look at <laughs> all the followers and it's so funny. All the mutuals. Who, who follows him? Everybody I know. Everybody, everybody I know. Everybody, yeah. Everybody. So the idea, it's like, yeah. oh, I don't like him. Fuck him. I hate him. Why do you, why do you follow him so much? It's nobody. It's, not, it's because it's, it's all, real. because it's a fodder, right? It's fodder. It's People Magazine. It's your, your wife is real. Your kids are real. The water you drink is real. Your community is real. Right. Whether you can defend yourself is real. Whether you can provide for your family is real. Whether you can do all these things are real. Yeah. This, the other noise is no, your friendships are real. A, 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 a few of them. Your business associates are real. All the other shit doesn't matter, and and there's a lot of other shit where you're like it doesn't really matter. You can have fun talking about it, but it can't take over your life. I love listening to things, being like, "Wow, I wonder." Like the chick who was on my show, Whitney Webb, she said a lot of interesting things. I was like, "Wow, interesting." But I wonder then, how much of it was bullshit too. Who knows? Yeah, that's that's my. Well, I'm thing. sure a lot of it was real, but who can't? But it's as real as anything else. But that's what I mean in the sense of yes. like she would talk about stuff, being like, "Oh, yes. we have proof of this and proof of this and proof of that," and you're like, "Yeah, but what does that even mean anymore? What can you even do with it?" Nothing. Shrug. It's like, <laughs> what are you going to do? Nothing. What are you going to do? Nothing. That's what people don't get. Yeah. But it's the, that's the only freedom. It's like, oh, pedophile cults, are you fucking kid? No. Well, then good. Let's start there. Right. Are you funding a pedophile cult? No. Good. That I know of. Are you? Right. Right. <laughs> True. Good <laughs> that point. I, that I know but of. that's the whole thing. It's like, hey, guys, you know what's going on. Know how fucked the world is. Don't, it, when it takes over your brain and every day you're yeah. like, oh, no, no, no. now you're living in this reality that you don't need to live in. Yeah. Just, just check out. Do you realize that you put something into existence that came true? Do you know this, that you did this? You know, you talk about, so, I, so much of, you talked about Disney plus and all that stuff. Yes. And you, and you were talking about shutting down the parks and stuff. Yeah. You know, they say they, they might be permanently closed forever. Yeah, Disney they're, said, they're in trouble. D D Disney might not be able to financially hold up those parks anymore. Disney's in trouble. Isn't that wild? You did that. Disney's in trouble. You vocally is said that. Part of what I mean when I say this is what we're going to grow up. Yeah, we're going to grow up, and part of this is deeply unhealthy to have thirty-five-year-olds walking around a park talking about my, <laughs> Mickey Mouse. Yeah, part of it's deeply unhealthy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's deeply unhealthy. To but have, to take your kids there is nice. It's beautiful. It's great. But to go there as an adult, it's sick. Shame. It's sick. Shame. And you know what? Now we're going to have to start raising our kids on like. You, you should know, have to wear. Remember, you should have to wear a vest. Grimm's fairy tales. Yeah, how dark they were. Yeah, kids getting put in ovens. Wolves right. eating people. What's closer to the world? What's closer to the world? The wolf coming and getting you. The old lady that looks nice giving you the, you know, like putting you in the oven. Mm -hmm. What's closer to the real world? That or a dancing teapot? Right. <laughs> yeah. What's closer to what's going to prepare yeah. kids more for the world? Reality. Those stories. Grim reality or goofball shit. Right. It's goofball shit. I can do you the world. Shut up. <laughs> Aladdin, you go to any of the countries that Aladdin, there's people are killing each other. <laughs> Aladdin should have been, <laughs> I can show you the camp. We <laughs> bombed it last Tuesday. They have a different God. And actually it's the same God, but it's a little different understanding of how it works. I killed your mom. Like that's what it should have been. <laughs> But it's instead it's this fairy tale horseshit. Yeah. Who does this help? Who does this help? Yeah. Doesn't help anybody. Yeah, we're fucked. It's a brilliant clip. That's a great I'm clip. I'm reposting that. Yeah, we're gonna cut that. We'll cut that. That's how sick sure. I am. You know, I talked to one of my right. friends. I talked to Giannis Papas the other day. We were on the Giannis phone for went back. on a tweeting rage this morning. He's always mentally ill. I love him. He's one of the craziest people can I've I ever read, met. Can I read his tweet? He goes real on quick? tweets and like in the <laughs> middle of the night he just starts losing it. Well, this is the first thing in the morning. Chris Stefano, his partner in crime, Chris Chris posted a uh, a, a picture of him as a, as a woman, one of those face swap apps. Yeah. And he was like, hey, baby, something like that, you know, yeah. whatever. And he goes, meanwhile, my boy is on one. And Giannis lit up. He goes, guys. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, wait, let's find the first one. 
Holy shit. I mean, he's, he's, he's out of his mind. I can't wait for faceless genius scientists to invent vaccines and treatments and for us to call it a deep state ploy, a plot to control and watch our dumb, boring lives, a way for Bill Gates to put African babies on a shish kebab for religious leaders to give <laughs> yeah. glory to God. Yeah. When people are at their worst, they act exactly like nature. Mankind is the only morally good force in the known universe. Yes, just us and maybe ladybugs. We don't have the fortitude and grit to survive this and adapt. We are fat, meth addicted, profoundly stupid body... <laughs> Body politic entertained by the lowest common denominator bred in circus the world has ever known. The advertiser-driven sex looks and culture has acted as brain-numbing sedative that has pushed forward an appetite for salacious entertainment. On the one hand, disingenuous PC self-righteousness, and on the other, George Carlin has been replaced by hot and dumb, pretentious, disingenuous, and self-righteous. I'll take it. I'll take America. Lots of death. And then, wait, this is my favorite. And then he goes, <laughs> a couple hours later, he just goes... Guys, disregard everything I just tweeted. All the fucking Stouffer's pizza is sold out everywhere, and I'm just pissed. <laughs> <laughs> He's a wild man. I talk to him all the time. And He's I, lovely, man. I talked to him the other I day. Love He's like, Giannis, we should have just bro. recorded this. He's like, we should have recorded it. So that's where we're all at now, where it's like we have a good conversation with a friend. It's like, we should have recorded it. We should have put it out there. How much do you want out there? That's the other thing, because I'm sure you have a lot of conversations day. you don't want out there. I, yeah, but I don't want to do, I don't want to go every day. Like a lot of people are like, why don't you do every day? I'm like, I like doing one podcast and then another. Yeah, and take your time. Well, how do you feel out. about this shit? Is takeout food safe or drive through safe? No, of course not. What Neither are you one about? of them are, but you know what's hilarious? The government tells us they're safe because they don't care if poor people die, like drive throughs They're like, yeah. yeah, they're safe. Yeah, well, you kidding me? You're not allowed to have fast food in the, in the city limits. But I've ordered Hills. takeout. You haven't ordered takeout? No. I yes, ordered, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I ordered yeah. take. I wipe it yeah. down. I sanitize. I switch it to another plate. I don't. Interesting. No eat, one cares. Eat it in the thing. No one cares. Well, what could you do? At I some know. point, what, what you could you do? do? It's a no, great you, point. Uh, at some point, you couldn't kill the germs that would have existed on the food unless you sprayed your food with a bacteria. Right. The other thing is, like, if I get sushi, I'll eat it in the thing because I'm like, well, if it's on the sushi, it's over. It's yeah, cold. You're, you're done already. Right. Right. I mean, the, the only you got to live with some level. You got to live with some level of. Of 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 uh, risk. Well, we talked about this before. The reason that the, the, the thing that blows my mind the most is like, don't go to the store, don't go to the store, don't go to the store, don't go to the store. Order in, get shipped, get shipped, get shipped. There are there are th tens of thousands and thousands of people who are packing your vegetables, getting your vegetables, putting it on a truck, taking to a place, cutting your meat. Da da da. Dude, dude, nothing changed on that front. So, what do you think was the what do you think was the cleaning if process? If this was a foodborne illness, it? we'd be fucked. We'd be fucking we'd dead. Be we'd be fucking dead. dead. We'd be all dead in a moment. I, I, I'm, I think this is going. When we study this years from now, we're going to say yeah, it was very transmittable in in clusters where people spend like a lot of time together. Sure. People, things like trains, that. planes, trains, stuff planes, like that. things like where that. you're in families. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's bad. It's very bad. But in LA, we're okay for now. I mean, we'll see. Everybody will see, we'll see, we'll, we'll see after this whole thing is over, we'll see how much, how wrong everybody was or how right people were. It's a good point. We'll see how wrong people were and how right people that we thought were wrong were. That will be fascinating well, to me. We'll also never know who's right or not because we'll never know how much the shutdown worked. Well, you can't, like, well, you can't. Because yeah. if it works, then the people that are like, it was never a thing are going to be like, it was never a thing. And you'll have to be like, ah, oh, yeah, I guess it was. But it's maybe it's the shutdown more so than it never. Well, yeah, like I, uh, like, here's the thing. What if they never said anything? That's what I think. And just let it something. happen? If they'd never said anything. But don't you think that already happened? No. Like you said before, they don't care about poor communities dying. Right. Fast food's illegal in Beverly Hills. You're right. not allowed to open a fast food restaurant in Beverly Hills. That's in fact, hilarious. if you're even close to it, like like Chipotle had to fight to put a ch uh, Chipotle in Beverly Hills Beverly because uh, Chipotle used to be owned by McDonald's. They were considered a... Fast food. Not fast food. It was another word fast for casual. it. Fast casual. It's like fast casual. That's yeah. right. So if they fit in that category, they're not technically fast food. They're allowed to operate in Beverly Hills. But Beverly Hills, it's illegal. Why would you think it'd be illegal? Well, they don't want pores. They don't want people who eat fast food. Well, there's a the reason city. there's not a train from Compton to Malibu. No shit. Right. <laughs> no shit. Also, the train they're building underground, the purple line or whatever that goes yeah. from downtown. Nobody's getting in that. It doesn't stop in, in Beverly Hills. I would never go near that. The purple line. I would never go. I would never walk underground to get in a train in L.A. <laughs> God, I've taken no. it. Really? I've taken one of. Where does the, it go? The red line from. Well, the red line goes from Hollywood to downtown. You can go downtown down to USC down to go watch a sporting Smart event for the kids. Good for the kids. Yeah, young young. But kids, the purple yeah. line that's going west. What's interesting is Beverly Hills fought and said you can't put a stop. Beverly, in Beverly Hills, Hills does not want. I mean, they are they're a community of super rich people, and they want to stay that way. Good for them. You know, I list certain communities: Hancock Park. Beverly Hills, you know, nice, upstanding. Yeah. They just, you, know, you go to Hancock Park, there's nothing like 
There's no bus stops. No. There's no. There's just like, yeah, just suburban. Do you like, feel, when you walk Beverly Hills, do you feel like they look at you a, diff- a certain way? No, because I have Prada glasses and I'm white. Mm-hmm. That's the reality. Mm-hmm. I could just be some some fat rich guy that's just, you know, pissed he can't golf. It, see, but only in this only in this city. Yeah. In another rich part of the United yeah. States, this doesn't work. Yeah. They'll know right away you're not rich. Of course. A- LA, you're allowed to just be. I, I But I have the Prada glasses and I, I, I don't look low born. Here's the thing. I don't look <laughs> low... I look like it's very possible I'm the I'm the unsuccessful child of a very wealthy family. You're like, oh yeah, that that's Tommy. He never figured it out. Right. He's the youngest. He's the loser. Yeah. Oh, that's He's a sweet kid. Yeah. He, had, he had trouble years ago. Yeah, that's Larry. He had he's a little incident. You yeah. Know? Right. I mean, I could very well be that guy. Nobody looks at me and they're like, well, he's 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 lighting the world on fire. But I could be a comedian. They're like, maybe that guy's a comedian. Maybe he's an actor. A writer. Maybe he's some kind of goon. Maybe he created a show. If 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 I, if I saw you from a distance, yeah. walking around my neighborhood yeah. like that, um, I would say, if I was the rich guy in the neighborhood, yeah. I'd look at you and I'd go, I bet you he uh, uh, operates a, a, pr- a company, a production company. Yeah, he does something. Yeah, he runs a thing. Yeah, he does something that they don't respect. Right. They're like, he does a thing that we don't respect. It's below. It's below. It's below us. Like when you really talk to entertain, when you talk oh, yeah. to rich people and yeah. you mention entertainment, they yeah, go, like, oh, oh, that's cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I'm an agent. They're like, oh, he's a big agent. He's but even signed. still, you're, they, yeah. they're still like, that's pathetic. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, there's no respect yeah. unless you work in an industry. Of course. Unless they're like, oh, you don't work in plastics? Yeah, right, right, oh, So right. you have no money. Yeah, you so take you're money poor. from other people, yeah. you're a poor person. Did you, how many assassinations of presidents have you tried to arrange? <laughs> None? <laughs> poor. Yeah. We're going to figure it out someday. Let's hope. We're going to figure it out someday. Um, I thank you, Tim, for coming on. This thank was, you this for having so me. I this mean, really it's, a, it's a great time. I it's am, always a fun time to I see I am you. a virologist. It's a bummer that it's happening like this and not in a more fun... When so now, pr- what's nights. your prediction? I mean, give me a prediction. When are we? When are we? When are we back? When? Yeah. When is the store nights back? When is the? When can I go get a poke bowl and sit out in Beverly Hills at Ocean Prime, my favorite restaurant, and eat a poke bowl? Mm, that won't happen till the fall, Ugh. and store won't happen till twenty twenty one. No, that's my. And that's, then how does comedy emerge? It's gonna be weird, right? No, honestly, I think. I think it's going to be a windfall of relief and people will, will start to pack in as soon as they well, can. Well, sure, but we're going to have to like, we're going to be, it'll us? be weird, yeah. Uh, it'll be it'll be a lot of parking lot discussions for us. We'll be, I, I think, I think the level of um, distance between comedian and fan will grow significantly larger. Good. <laughs> you don't ever meet a motherfucker ever again. Phenomenal. That's what's going to happen for, I believe, I truly I used to believe love that. meet and greets though. I got to be honest. I didn't mind shaking hands, taking I did photos. every single one I could. The last one I, I did every one I, I shook everybody's hand, but you know I what? I think if I had COVID, which I didn't because I took the antibody test, but I thought I got it in, in uh, I still think I had it. I think I got it in, um, where? Uh, Vancouver, doing a meet and greet. Really? Yeah. But I also, because I had strep, but then I had a, a three week cough. Nobody had three cough. Which I know. I remember that you were. Yeah, you did have a weird. Yeah, but, but that my, was all the way in February. No, early March. Mar- oh, yeah, was early March. But my friend who's a doctor is like, yeah, that's every sickness. That's cough. the problem. Like, yeah, that's everybody every- has every sickness all yeah, the time. So you like, think that's every sickness well, Could you be ever. fighting? Who knows? And I'm like, well, you don't have a cough with strap. He's like, yeah, usually, but who cares? What does that mean? He's like, yeah, you can get a cough with anything. I'm right. Like, oh, uh. I guess. Like, yeah, but it lasted for three weeks. He's like, yeah. The winter cough. You had a winter cough. That's my favorite thing about a doctor. Yeah, is when you go. Yeah, but the skin thing. Like I had this. I had this. This bite on my yeah. hand from like a spider, and it spread a little bit, and then it went away. Then it spread and went. And I finally asked the dermatologist. I said, "Something's got to be wrong." Yeah. Said, what do you mean? I said it just like won't heal all the way. He's like, "Yeah, no, some things don't heal all the way." Yeah, interesting. Well, that's why they call it a practice. Doctors right. will go. That's They're why we call it, it a practice. Yeah, and they figure it out. Yeah, we haven't perfected it yet. They don't know this. This is what's scary about this thing. If we knew, we don't care about the people that die from the flu because we know what the flu is. Like, oh yeah, the flu. Mm, yeah, from, yeah, fuck it. This is a new thing that's killing us. We're like, oh, that's panicking us. Everyone's like, well, oh, do you know how many people die in automobile accidents? Like, yeah, but we know what that is. Well, it's per- that's also it, also one of those things is completely out of your control. Some of it is yeah. in your control. So I mean, that's the whole thing. This you have a, a level of control. Well, that's it's much just the asymptomatic than- thing that you can have it for two weeks and not have any symptoms. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's bio war. Like, not that it's bio warfare, but like that's what makes you like you like. Oh, what a brilliant bio weapon. So do you think it's way more airborne than they say? No. You I think, think it's, it's less? Not? It's interesting. Less airborne than they say. Only 17% of people on the Daily Diamond Princess cruise got it. And they were living together. Like You've been on a cruise dish. before? Yeah, I bet one cruise, the Practical Jokers cruise. 
Oh, you performed? Yeah, I, I hate cruises. I mean, I talked about it on Rogan. We left so hard. I mean, they're disgusting. I got offered a cruise, yeah, Ugh. one time. It's bad. No, I would never. Yeah, they're horrific. You, you, there wasn't enough money I did that it Impractical Jokers could have given Sal Volcano was like... I love Sal. He's like, you, you know, Doesn't it was matter. me. It was Bert did it. Ari did Don't it. Care. I know, but it's could've the worst. Could have given me a fucking now I Ferrari would, filled with gold. Now I would no. really only do it for 100K. Not, not even, I promise Yeah, I, I would do it for 100, but that's it. I wouldn't. I have a, I have a legitimate thousand? fear of those things. They are gross. I, out on the water with people that I don't want to be no, around all the, the time. it's the worst. The food has freaked me out for years. That's for why years. you're like, oh, there's going to be, I, it's interesting that you go, I think it's going to be relief. People keep going back to comedy clubs. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, they will. They will, but it's, they will when it's. it's very interesting. When it, dude, you know, when the government says it's okay, they're going to yeah. feel like it's, 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 everything is solved. Or will people go, you know what? I'm. I've changed fundamentally and now I don't want to be out like that. Mm, people are, pe okay. I don't people know. People are but so mad thing. about being told no, to stay inside. They're fighting it. I know that small groups of people are fighting it and they're fighting it. I went there. to a party last night in South Central with yeah. a bunch of gang members yeah. too. It was wonderful, man. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear about that? Tuna tartar. They busted yeah. 75 people in a room but together. Like, you might be right, but I don't think anyone knows how people are going to feel after this. This is what I don't think. I think right. nobody knows. I don't think anyone knows how people are going to feel and the people that think they know are wrong Fran Lebowitz said it a great way. She's like, and when you're wrong, you're usually the most wrong you can be. She's like, she went around the country for two years mm -hmm. going, Trump will never win. And then Trump won. She's like, well, I was the worst wrong I could be. Right. So the idea is like, I think at the end of the day, we are all expecting one thing. It might be the opposite. It might be something new totally that we didn't think. Right. I think it's going to be interesting. I don't, you know, people just going to see comedy. That's why the store is great because they know who we are. People come out to see mm -hmm. like, but like people just going to a random comedy club. I don't know. Until there's a vaccine, I don't know if people are going to go out to random comedy. 50 50 here. I think I agree with you on yeah. that point. But on the other side of the coin, I would say it's exactly what people need as a relief for it what is. they've not been getting. It is. I agree with you. But, but I they think, just haven't been getting it. I do think this ushers in a digital world. Yeah. I do think this issues this ushers in a digital world. I do believe that. I do believe. Like, do you think Vegas will ever come back the way it is? No. Like Vegas is fucked. I think I, not for a long time. Right. Not for a long time. I mean, in a decade, who knows, but... Because Vegas used to be this ultimate place to go to. Here's what the problem is. Everybody is figuring out ways to live in this new reality, and they're investing time and money in that. So that when the old reality comes back, how much progress have we made on the new reality? Where that's gone. Correct. Right. How yeah. much progress have we made? If I build my podcast to a huge podcast, do people want to see me do a live podcast instead of stand-up? Well, then how about this? Do you think we're going to go backwards as far as, like you said, this whole uh, the, this self uh, cars, that are, you're not going to drive a car and own a car anymore? Don't you think people don't want to get in other people's cars anymore? It'd be self-driving. You're not getting in somebody right, else's So you're getting car. your own personal vehicle, but you're not going to drive it. Well, you're getting in a fleet of cars that are sterilized all the time. I mean... So it shows up and leaves and shows up and leaves. Yeah. It's and, and as you get out, it sprays it in your... Yeah. Whatever. I mean, Is that what you dream of? I mean, I don't I don't want it. You don't? No. no. You Because you want the independence want the independence I want, I freedom? want the freedom of... Turning a key, getting in a car, or pushing a button because I'm in Kerouac. the car. I can yeah. go wherever I want. I can drive to a new town and start a new life. That's over. That's over. I'm doing it. The idea of you getting in a car and driving to a new place. I'm gone. It's the most American thing in the world because that didn't happen anywhere else. Europe's so small. It's like the next town's your town. Right. The reality is like the, the idea of an American thing. To me, America's always been symbolized by like, oh, things didn't work out here. I can leave, go somewhere else and start over again and make good. And I just think that's decreased. And it's starting to decrease because you know, people's lives start to get planned out when they're seven now. Mm -hmm. By the time you're 21, you're like, I know exactly where I'm. America to me was like being 25 and be like, that's when I started comedy. I was like, what? What am I going to do? Right. Well, that's why well, there's all this fight over free education, but the idea of college to me is so flawed to begin with. Yeah. That's, I had a big, I know what you say when you say you missed out on college, but, yeah. and I loved it. I had a yeah. great, wonderful time. But there's so many pieces of me that are like, man, that was such a forced hand. Oh, yeah, sure. It was such a forced fucking hand that society didn't even give a shit about anyway. Right. The only reason that it was necessary is to take you out of your parents' hair post high school. Right. And is figuring out your lifetime to give them gap time. Right. So that it's like, hey, man, you know how you've been gone? Don't come back. Yeah. Because many people that graduate high school. Yeah. They yeah. just had to be at home, and parents were like, "Get the fuck out!" College of here. may be down for the count now for a little while because I hope so. I don't College think is coming bullshit. Back in Good. the fall, it's bullshit. Yeah, dude. I, honestly, the it's problem bullshit. is the schools where you know school is child care. People are like what school? School is a lot of it's child care. Yeah, prior to high school, it is correct. Right, those schools are fucking people now that aren't open. People right. are like, "What am I going to do with my kids?" See, that sucks. Daycare is closed. Everything. But I, a I think post high school. Oh yeah, I don't. I I just. And it's adult care. Yeah, it's adult care. Yeah, and I don't think we need it. 
Yeah. Because we need to grow up, like we said. 100%. Stop smoking weed and grow up and get out of adult care. Grow up. Tim, you're the Take best. The I love you. All right. Um, Thank you. You're, you're, we're, Tim Dillon Show. Tim on, Dillon Show. Uh, wherever it is. You know, it's, it's on, on everywhere. It's on Apple. And it comes out every single week. week. Every single week. What yeah. day of the week? Sunday. Saturday night. I was just going to say, you're a Saturday guy, I thought. It's a Sunday. Well, Saturday at 9 in LA, but it's East Coast is, is uh, 12, so it's Sunday. Whatever. We we do East Coast times. Go to the Tim Dillon Show. Listen to it. Watch it. It's amazing. Uh, thank you for thank coming you. on the show. Thank you, uh, sir. I end the episode. Yeah. You have to look in the camera. You have to say one word or one phrase when I get off camera here that, that uh, encapsulates whatever you wanted to. Go ahead. Mass death. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers.